Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro D.C. Also, Mark Levine, Democratic strategist, a former top lawyer to Congressman Barney Frank and talk show host on Pacifica Radio. With the big news and a phone call with supporters, former Massachusetts Governor Mitt Romney announces he will not run for president. After putting considerable thought into making another run for president, I've decided it's best to give other leaders in the party the opportunity to become our next nominee. Wow, that was fast. It was just <laughs> last week that Romney announced he was considering a third run. Jack, what do you think? Was this the right decision? Yeah, it's, I don't know if it's the right decision for him. It's the right decision for America. As you know, Morris, I'm no Mitt Romney fan. I mean, he's been a liberal Republican, a moderate Republican, a conservative Republican, a moderate, then a conservative again. People like that, if they get elected, they'll run as a conservative, but we don't know what he'll be. He could be a, a well left of center guy. So Mitt, Rom Rip, Mitt Romney out of the national life of, of this country, out of the public life is a very good thing. I can tell you what I I think's behind it. Romney, you know, the conventional wisdom is he couldn't get Jeb Bush's donors. They've had a two-week battle over donors. Jeb Bush won out. That's conventional wisdom. I'll take you behind the curtain. You go behind the curtain, the issue is Romney doesn't want to spend his own money. Primary costs about $200 million. He's got that, but he and maybe his wife, a lot of pressure from her, they don't want to spend that money. And moments after Romney's announcement, Jeb Bush released a statement. He called Mitt a patriot and that his time serving the nation isn't done yet. Mark, is this a good thing for Democrats? Assuming Hillary runs, do you think Romney would have made it harder or would Jeb? And by the way, you pegged it right. You made news last weekend. You said Romney would not run, so congratulations on that. Thank you. I did say he wouldn't run, and I also said that Jeb Bush and Hillary Clinton are going to be the nominees, so we'll see if I get that prediction right as well. Now, is there room for Romney in the cabinet? He, he wouldn't be a VP, but is he, is he cozying up to Jeb to try to get a job? I definitely think this was all about cozying up to Jeb. He wanted to feel important. He threw out a trial balloon. Even Republicans were laughing at at him, he has no chance, but he could be in the cabinet, absolutely. Uh, Jack, do you see Romney anywhere in the cabinet? Uh, yeah, I think Romney could be a Treasury Secretary. He could be a Commerce Secretary. Probably would be a good Treasury Secretary. That's a good thing. You keep him out of ideology. Conservatives like me are happy if he's out of the ideology business and into the functional business, into the bureaucratic business at Treasury. I think he'd make a very good Treasury Secretary. In terms of on the ticket, no, they're going to uh, Romney on the ticket. That's not happening. All right, I'm telling you, folks, 2016 may be a ways off yet, but what you've just heard, think about it. Play back the tape in a year. We may be right. All right, let's switch gears. This week, the White House passed the Saving American Workers Act, a bill that would redefine the definition of full-time as 40 hours a week, upping the threshold from 30 hours. Some Republicans see it as a way to overturn part of the Affordable Care Act that requires employers to provide health insurance for full-time workers. They argue that the provision is causing businesses to hire more part-time employees and cut hours. But Jack, if the definition is changed, would that stop employers from cutting hours? They could just cut them before the 40-hour mark. Well, it's a good start, Morris. I think what this is, it's a good start. It's, it's a good negotiating uh, thing for the Republicans. They've got to, we have to start somewhere with shutting down affordable health care. Uh, we're seeing, we're already seeing it all over the country. Mark knows this. You're seeing people not hired. You're seeing people part-time. Everybody is trying to stay under 50. The accountants are telling you you have to hold to 49 employees. This is even starting to affect consulting firms in Washington. It may even someday affect a business like mine, which is a small consulting firm. So this is a very good start. Jack, it's always amusing to debate with you. You consider Romney left of center and you consider affordable health care a really bad idea. That's when right. you've got 50 million Americans who now have affordable health care that didn't have it before, you've got, uh, and really there's been very few jobs that are cut. We have unemployment at way lower than the Bush era, deficits down from the Bush era, stock markets up, inflation's down, oil prices are down. Well, You're really looking hard for something to complain about. The country's, had, the country's had a rebound, no thanks to Obama, but I never blamed Obama for the recession. I blamed Obama. You can play back well, many given things. that it happened before he came into office, it'd be really hard to blame him. I blamed Obama for wasting $4 trillion of, the, of our taxpayer dollars. That's what I blamed Obama for, for the recession. No, Mark, here's the thing with affordable health care. I can make it real simple. A person shouldn't, a man shouldn't have a child and then hand the bill to the state. You have a baby and you say, oh, I can't pay for it, my wife and my child. Here, you, here, state government, you pay for the bill. Federal government, Except you pay the bill. That's a joke. That's Jack, not the you kind of Let me, let me get have. back to the Saving American Worker Act. All President right. Obama's already issued a veto threat on the bill. 
All right, Mark, does the provision in the Affordable Care Act put an unfair burden on businesses? It's projected that some large restaurant chains, and Jack, you've been in the restaurant business, yes. will have to spend millions of dollars to cover employee health costs. How about it, Mark? Well, I think everyone should be covered. I, listen, I would prefer simply the, what they, the way they do it in the rest of the world. Everybody is covered. I don't want businesses to have to cover it. Republicans refuse to have universal care. So the second choice is to have businesses covered. We it. can't but afford the it. Country we, can't, on Earth, we can't afford we should, it, Mark. It's too much on earth we shouldn't have people dying because they can't afford health care businesses can't afford it right jack yeah morris the, the, the issue with the issue with all of this is we know affordable health care i mean think about this you have a situation obama comes out and says you know 90 percent of the country has to sacrifice so we can help the bottom 10 percent the white house then has to goad the bottom 10 percent into going to the website and signing up what does that tell you about this system it's a it, lot more than the bottom it's ridiculous 10%. ridiculous right. another veto threat coming from the white house is focused on the keystone pipeline senate republicans along with some democrats Democrats passed a measure supporting the initiative. Jack, why are Republicans passing bills they know have no chance of being signed by the president? Well, my hope with this, and our firm is involved with the, this bill in some ways, uh, Morris, full disclosure, my hope with this is that there will be a negotiation. It appears that this might be the first thing that intransigent Barack Obama may negotiate on. There may be a deal in the works, maybe we'll make some news here, where Obama will get infrastructure, he'll get bridges and roads and airports, and Republicans will get the pipeline. I think that's shaping up. Uh, Republicans, you know, politically, why do you do it? You want Obama to walk the plank. You want him to have to come out and appear to be an environmental extremist in front of the nation and veto that bill. Otherwise, Mark, you're being the Democratic strategist here. Does the president risk being seen as stubborn? The Keystone Pipeline is a bipartisan effort. Couldn't Obama use this as a bargaining chip, as Jack was suggesting, even for something like immigration? Look, when you look at infrastructure, when you look at roads, bridges, and airports, that's something that virtually all Americans want. But when you look at a pipeline that basically helps Canada sell oil cheaper to China and risks spills, risks environmental damage, risks damage to the largest aquifer in North America underneath Nebraska, I don't think it's a done deal at all. Obama will veto the, the Keystone Pipeline. And you know, Morris, we Obama don't need it. Hates, oil price is already at record He's mode. so ideological on fossil fuels. Maybe we'll make some more, more news here. You know what he's doing, and not many people even know about this? He's starving the current pipeline. He's trying to block fuel from flowing in the current pipeline from Prudhoe Bay that's been there for 40 years. He's literally trying to destroy that. That's how incredibly ideological he is on fossil fuels. But at the same time, he's opening offshore drilling again. So, so go figure. All right, before we go, let's talk about First Lady Michelle Obama. It's not often that she's the topic of political news, but when she accompanied the president on a trip to Saudi Arabia, she was criticized for not wearing a headscarf, which is standard practice in the country. Many say it was a political statement. Others say it was par for the course. After all, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton didn't wear one on her, vi her visit in 2012. Neither did First Lady Laura Bush in 2008. So, Jack, what's your take on Kudos this? Kudos to Michelle Obama. Kudos to Michelle Obama. She's right. These are barbaric customs. Nobody should follow them. They degrade women hideously. They're part of the 7th century. No woman. I would encourage women all over the world not to be degraded like that. Mark, do we well, have some bipartisan agreement here? Well, we do. I, I am proud of her for not kowtowing, and, and, but I, I wouldn't call it a barbaric custom. If this is something that women choose to wear of their own free will as part of their religion, I think that's great. It's when they're required to wear it as the state requiring them, that's when it's oppressive, and good for Michelle Obama for not doing that. I think she should have pushed the envelope and asked the new king, say, hey, let me drive you around the block. <laughs> the <current start> <laughs> <driver>. <laughs> that would have been really, really progressive. All right, Mark Levine, Democratic strategist, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, the best political team in Washington. Thanks to you both. Thank you, Morris. Thank you, Thank Morris you, Mark. and Jack. Thank you, guys.